Porgy, Porgy, Pudding and Pie caught the dog tooth. I am not a <laughs> oh, man! Let me set the scene. It is 6.15am. I'm about one hour north of Coffs Harbour at a small town known as Arawara. The tractor is being hooked up to the boat because we're doing a thing called a beach launch. Now I don't do these very often and I'm very excited. We're going to hop in the boat, we're going to get launched off the beach and this is a very famous little fishing ground in a very famous little fishing village. I'm fishing with Brett Wilson from Shimano Australia, Scotty Amon who is local in these parts knows these waters like the back of his hand and today is going to be a fantastic day's fishing in northern New South Wales. The sun is rising over my right shoulder. You know what I love about getting up early? Nothing. Well, it's actually a lie. Young Das back just down the beach. How good was that? Beach launching. I don't do it often, but it's very exciting. And a wave came over the back at one stage. So my boating and fishing tip for the morning. Your waterproof bag is only waterproof if you keep the zip closed. Time to go fishing and get the water out of the bag. Uh, how's Red that? Eyes on. First cast. That coughs. Not a big fish, Brett? No, nah, seems like a small red, I'd say. Not a bad way to start the day, though, mate. That's alright. Yep, there he is. That yeah. Is Cute little. What's with his head? <laughs> well, we spoke about this last night at dinner. Down in South Australia and Victoria, they don't have the bump. and. Up here they do, so there you go, this is a, a one kilo fish. That's like the Brett Wilson of Satter. <laughs> With head like an old, <laughs> he's got head like an old man. We did not get bumps on fishes' heads like that. We can get a 20 pound snapper, it just looks like a pinky. If that's what the snapper looks like here, I'm very excited about finding a big one. That is just absolute gold. Good work, mate. <laughs> They're monsters, aren't they? Massive whale, like huge, just went 20 yards behind the boat. First cast, Brett gets a snapper. I think we're in a pretty good area, what do you reckon? Yeah, it's looking good. The sound is looking good, mate. It's telling us there's a fair bit of bait scattered down there. Um, we're going to come up on a shallower reef now, so um, big long casts out there into the shallow water, and the snapper are usually sitting mid water and they're looking up for their food, so they'll be. Yeah, they'll come up and hit that lure well before it gets to the bottom most times. I'll tell you what's amazing, I've caught thousands of snapper, but I've never caught them this way, in this situation. And the way these fish look, it's just weird. So what we're doing is casting as far as we physically can, trying to allow the soft plastic to sink almost to the bottom and then we're just working it back in, well, an erratic fashion, I suppose. Some flicks, some bumps, some whines. And Scott's saying the fish actually look up and feed. So it's quite different to the fish we get at home in Melbourne and also the fish I caught in South Australia, which is really cool because different is good. Oh, 
Oh, there's a fish. Good red too. Well done. I need a bit of a hand here, Bretto. Yep. Played up a little bit mid-water, this fish. So oh, he's hit you on, on the drop? Yes, mate, only oh, three to five metres <laughs> down. <laughs> that lure's gone. Isn't it a Do you want to tail that or? Yeah. You're right. Now you may notice we forgot something this morning. <laughs> her name's Annette, lovely young girl from Coffs. <laughs> Could you pass her? Yeah. <laughs> nice awesome. fish. Yeah, very good. Lash. How's the way it's eating the plastic? Oh, yeah. Go on, look at that. There's another bump for you, Paul. Yep. Starting to grow a bump. Not, not like the noggin on that first one, but still a cracking <laughs> yeah. snapper. Yeah. And that's literally a cast to cast to snapper a snapper. I think this place is going quite well. All right, Paul, promise you something special at Cross Harbour in the way of snapper. Reds, we call them up here. Got some special surprise for you here. Come over and have a look. And I know what the special surprise is. Now, first couple of casts these boys got snapper this morning. Then they're driving away from the spot. So what are you doing to me, fellas? Let me just say, it's all going to be worth it. Because today, our camera boat isn't just a camera boat. It's a dive boat. And these boys, they're going to go down 12 metres and get a crayfish, you're telling me. Yeah, mate, that's a bit of a surprise to go with our snapper. It's been down a while, mate, but we have some colour. And I think it's the right colour too, this Oh, oh look at have that. Have a look at that. Hey, there you go, boys. Beautiful. Love your work. work. First couple. There you go. You said red. They're red. How good are these things? Now, what's the go with the slot limit on these crayfish? All right, mate, there's an upper limit and a lower limit. It's carapace measurements. And the upper limit is to protect the, the big breeders, yep. which is really important, carry lots of eggs and produce lots of young. Two per diver. You feel the most important thing, incredible eating. Awesome eating. Now, awesome. for those people who heard the word carapace and they're confused, that is basically this part of the crayfish, like the head. That is how you measure the cray. Yep. It's all about the carapace. So get it right, because you don't want to take the wrong size, because you want these to be here for generations to come. But these two, the only generation they're going to be a part of, is our next dinner generation. Absolutely. I'm with you on that one, mate. That is insane. Oh. You gotta like it when your crayfish are too big. You won't see this very often, and it's gonna hurt a little bit, but go to the depths, my crayfish friend. Oi! I think I love you. You know what? It was love at first bite. We've been told by the local help that we need to fish the entire water column here for the snapper and it's not real deep, we're fishing in about 50 to 60 feet of water. So the general rule with soft plastics, fish as light as you possibly can all the time as long as you're in the zone where you need to be. There's two lures that we've chosen from the Squidgy range to fish today and that's the Wriggler and the Flickbait. Now the two very different looking lures and the actions that you use for those lures and the types of retrieve are also very different. The Wriggler has a nice, long, curly tail, works very, very well on the drop. So you don't need to really give it a big sort of a rip, you just need to slow lift and let the lure do all the work. You don't have to do too much. 
But the flick bait, that's something where the angler actually imparts the action himself. It's a real good rip and a, and a dart and make that lure really move around. So both lures work very, very well. And as we are doing today, as you always should do, I'm using the wriggler, Paul and Scotty are using the flick bait. And we're going to see which one is going to unlock the fish. Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by BoatSales.com.au well, the old Pathfinder Diesel, she is purring like a pussycat. Now, I just want to take you through a little bit of a driving tip. A lot of people tow big boats and it can be daunting at times. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to round the corner up here and just show you a couple of ways of doing it. Firstly the wrong way, then the right way. Let's hope I get the right way right and not the wrong way right, because that would be embarrassing. So we're approaching a pretty sharp corner here. Take the first one, no dramas. But then you'll see here, if I drove as though I didn't have a boat on, which I'll do, you'll see, bang, we get curved. And that is not a good look for your tyres, your springs, or your trailer. It's all about just remembering that you've got a big boat and trailer on the back. And when you turn, exaggerate your movement. So what I do here, I go a little bit to the left first, then swing back around to the right, and you'll see the trailer goes nowhere near that curve, and I get a beautiful turn. Well, I hope that little explanation helps you take those tight corners a bit better in the future. Remember, always go slow, no rush. Don't over accelerate and don't brake too hard either when you're towing a big boat. Keep those corners nice and wide and your tyres and wheels will love you for a long time. This fishing and boat trip was brought to you by boatsales.com.au and my very happy trailer. I'm a great fan of these flick baits for soft plasticking for snapper. They've got a profile that's very much like the yellowtail that swarm around here in big schools. Very, very important to get them rig right. First of all, measure out your plastic. Know where the hook's going to come out so that head doesn't bunch. And then go smack bang in the centre, making sure to keep it as it goes all the way through in the dead centre of that plastic. Come out. Bring the hook point out right where you've made the mark. Push it onto the head so there's no pull on the hook. It's all from the front of the plastic here, from the jig head. Now that's right, we can test them. It should come directly forward through the water without kicking off to one side or the other. That's it, that's nice it, that's one, sure. Brady. How good is that? You got smoked. Brady's on. It's all happening. <laughs> that's not a big fish though, is no, it? No, it's not a big fish, no. You want to get up and yep. do something with Brady? Not a big fish at all. Still. But... Oh, it just grew a bit. <laughs> it did just grow a bit, didn't it? Our camera boat has a fish hooked up as well, so we thought all oh, could be happening. Then, then Scotty missed one, and then you hooked up straight away. You want a king? Is that a king? Oh, it's, yeah, well, yeah. Is it? You got a king in here, yep. King it fish. is a kingfish. Awesome. Beautiful. Good stuff. Oh, look at the colour in that. Good work, mate. Look oh, at there's that. another one there. Mates. There's another one there. There's heaps. I'll see, how, I'll see if I can get his mate. I'll keep him there, Paul. Thanks, mate. Just going to try and hold him there. So what Brett's doing here is holding the kingfish in the water. I'm dropping a plastic down beside his fish to see if I can't bring his mates up. I'll drop it down, Bretto, and then I'll wind it up quick. You can take him around again if you want. Yep. And this is a very unselfish thing to do because if you can turn it into a double, it'll be very exciting. No, I think they've gone, I think mate. his mate has moved on. Got him on! Oh, sweet! Nice! And a very good call too because Scotty said if we come to the east side of that island there's a chance we might find a king. Yeah, and we did. How good's that? Yeah. Cracker fish now I assume in New South Wales that's not a legal fish? No, no it's not. But, no. still a cracking fish and yellowtail kingfish, Cereola lalandi, I reckon one of the toughest fish on fins. I'm sure Definitely. someone will argue with that, but they go hard, don't yeah, they? Yeah, certainly do. I mean, that drag's nearly locked up and he still managed to pull it, so... Good work. Yeah, no, it is good. Great fun to catch. So, snapper, craze, tailor, kings, three of them on squidgy soft plastics. I reckon they go all right.
there is some serious weight, my friend. <laughs> but Scotty, can you back in a bit, mate? Yeah, mate, no worries at all. That's it, thank you. Just keep, keep going, keep going. Now, I played around with wrigglers and all sorts of things, and Brett suggested going to a squidgy flick bait. What size is that pilly, mate? 145 mil. 145. Scotty's favourite. <laughs> Scotty loves the flick baits. In fact, it was very hard to get one of his tackle box, I must say. And we worked this area, and I think it's our camera boat that saved the day for us, yeah, isn't it, mate? It certainly has. Today, Today, we've got no net, of course. Yeah, you well. get, we don't have a big net, but you get all the big jobs. But they physically started catching a few fish, so we snuck over to where they were, some kings turned up. And I don't know what this is, but unfortunately the first run was a screamer, and I think you've missed it. There is lots of weight there, Brett. Lots of weight. What do you reckon? I don't think it's a king. No, no colour? No, it's a... Oh, that's what I want to see. We're no going colour. or because it was a bump. there was a bump. Look, there's another one. Look oh at that. Yes. Oh yeah. That's what you want. That is a telltale sign that it may be a snapper. And I reckon it might be, mate, because it's dogging down on yeah. the boat now. Um, it reminds me of a long tail tuna. I caught one. <laughs> it's just dogging under the boat, and I can't lift. Oh, I can't lift it. Yes, we've got some colour, and it's the right colour too. What mate. colour is it? Red and blue. And that's just <laughs> that's just my face from pulling it so hard. <laughs> Oh, that's a big fish, mate. Lovely nice fish. fish. Oh, Lovely fish. look at that. Look at them packs like that. Looks that awesome. is a fat fish. Oh. oh easy. Look at the head on it. That is wrong, mate. This is when you don't want to remember you forgot the net, if that makes any sense. Please, oh. Fredo, please. <laughs> the lip grip. Oh. The lip grip's not big enough, mate. You need a hand. <laughs> you got him? <laughs> oh. oh, finally. Okay. Fishing. And boating tip number two. <laughs> when packing for any day on the water, remember a net. Not the girl who works at the local bakery, those green enviro things, because oh. that is a horse of a fish oh. and you're enjoying your colour, mate. <laughs> I think that that first run, it saved us in the end because that first run was blistering and without the net. It um, absolutely smoked. We actually oh. had to back up on it at one stage. What a crack of fish. I've got to say, I did not expect to catch snapper that big in New South Wales to start with. And I didn't expect to catch snapper that big on squidgies in New South Wales. How good is it? And you wanted that bump, you got it. I've got a bump! That is gold. Now I've got some bad news. Normally a snapper this big would go back, but today it ain't because it's part of our menu. Certainly. And I've told these fish from these parts it tastes pretty sensational. I've seen Scotty fill it, debone and skin a snapper before, mate, so I'm looking forward to it for sure. Well to Brett, to Scotty and the entire team, this is just sensational and we're going to eat like kings tonight. Yeah. Woohoo! That is a bowl of absolute crayfish gold. Now today, I spoke about my very talented camera boat driver. And this is the man, John Featherston. I've got to say, you have done a great job, but I suppose it's easy diving down and getting crazy when you've got big tanks in your back full of air in it. No, Paul. Uh, scuba diving and spearfishing, or collecting anything with scuba in New South Wales is illegal. So you actually dove to the bottom on a breath of air? One breath of air. Two questions. How deep, how long can you hold your breath for? Well, these lobster came out of about 12 metres of water. You hold your breath as long as you need to. At one stage today, he actually popped up with a cray in each hand. I actually think that was just showing off. My belly is very happy about it. And the reason I didn't go in, because I'm sure you're going to ask, I normally only free dive to like 25 metres. I just didn't feel 12 was enough of a challenge. Fair Nickham. No, for sure. <laughs> that wouldn't have challenged you at all. Now, in saying that, how deep can a free diver go on a big breath of air, hunt a fish, and come back up? Guys can dive, you know, plus 30 metres and, and chase fish in that depth of water pretty comfortably. That is insane. Go and step 30 metres out in the backyard, one breath of air down there. It's just incredible. Now, I've eaten this a lot of ways. Apparently tonight we're doing something a little bit different. Yeah, you're going to be spoiled tonight with my gourmet lobster and snapper pizza. That sounds too good. So John, how do you make the famous snapper and crayfish pizza? Okay, first of all, homemade base. Then we've got tomato paste, anchovies, bocconcini, pretty much whatever you want to put on it. But the special ingredient we've got on this is obviously our fresh snapper from today and some crayfish. So here we go. And we're not going to skimp. We've got plenty of fresh crayfish there. Just spread that across the pizza. And once we've got him on there, it is looking so good. We're gonna not skimp because we've got plenty of beautiful fresh coughs lobster. And then of course, what's a pizza without cheese, Paul? Absolutely. There we go. This is going to be so incredibly good. And you know what, I'm gonna help because I haven't really contributed except for the snapper so far. So, you've done nothing but get the craze, make the pizza. I'm gonna do the hard work, I'll put it in the oven. Well, how 
good as this. Scott, Brett, John, we did the damage. We caught beautiful snapper, some sensational craze, and what a way to end the perfect day. Do yourself a favour, come to Coffs Harbour. This place, it is incredible. Coffs Harbour Tourism, thank you so much for showing me the light. Welcome to a very informal production meeting of iFisher Tackle World. We're sitting there having a beautiful feed aboard Balmari over 80 foot of sheer luxury. There is Opulence, it's our fishing boat. We're heading out to some incredible fishing grounds off Fiji tomorrow, and this is how we do it. George Trinkler, what are we actually going to catch? Hopefully a big dog tooth tuna. I love dog tooth tuna. They're going to be one of the toughest fish in the ocean. Now, live bait or jig, because I know both work very successfully. Well, Paul, we can try jigging first, and then we'll try some bait fishing. Now, obviously, there's dog tooth down, you've got to see them out. There must be wahoo, there must be tuna, there must be some pretty incredible stuff oh, out there. Wahoo, yellowfin, even marlin, possible to even catch one of them. Sounds like a very big day ahead. We've got a big night's sleep. I think we need a little bit more lamb curry because I'm going to need some serious guns for these fish. Let's get into it, Georgie. is a beautiful part of the world. And this is where all the planning and the preparation comes to a head. We are finally heading to the sea now, a place that fishing dreams are made of. I didn't even sleep last night, and that's how excited I am. We've just run 20 minutes from Anchorage at Cape Washington to a sea mount. Now this seamount climbs from a depth of 2,000 metres up to 145 metres. If you want an idea of what that's like, it's twice the size of the mountain behind me. 
Current pushes in here, up against the seam out, creating an upwelling, which means bait fish. And that's what we're looking for, bait fish and big fish. <laughs> there you go mate. So just to explain what's going on here. We're actually looking for small yellow fin to perhaps use as live baits later. Look at that, that's gonna become our bait. I've got a fish coming up here too. Let's say it's another small yellow fin. Yeah. Oh, he has worn himself out, this little guy. And it's a small yellow fin tuna. Just the perfect fish for a very, very big fish. Look at that. That is pretty. Believe it or not, those small yellowfin tuna we just caught are now the bait. And George is sending one down about 150 metres on this extremely heavy outfit. And Eel is getting the chair ready. We hope that something very, very big is going to eat that tuna because it's full of protein. And then we're going to see some serious action out here on the seamount. I'm acting like an outrigger clip here. Just holding the line in my hands, feeling the live bait, waiting for something to eat him. When it eats, I'll just dump it. You watch what happens to Paul then. It's hard to comprehend that there's actually fish in the ocean that can make this reel seem small. But if there's one fish that'll do that, it is a dog tooth tuna. Or a big blue marlin, you just never know. When you get a live bait out there that's that big, anything could physically eat it. The tension's building. And George, I've got to say, I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> We know what you'd rather be doing We know what you're really good